Twitter, SD48.5. Attaka Marana Sati Sutta 1. Okay, so this is the first its discourse on the mindfulness of death, A8.73. 8.73. Now, this is a sutta about the meditation on death should be done with every breath. Okay, this is the, where the Buddha is telling us, teaching us how to meditate, basically, right? On death, no? Uh, page 11135. One, one, Atakamarana Sati Sutta 1, the first eight discourse on the mindfulness of death. A8.75. At one time, the Blessed One was staying in the brick house at Nadika. There, the Blessed One addressed the monks. Pictures. Bhante, the monks replied to the Blessed One in ascent. Pictures. The mindfulness of death, when cultivated, grown, is of great fruit, great benefit, plunging towards Nirvana, whose goal is Nirvana. You, bhikshus, cultivate the mindfulness of death, right? So here the Buddha is telling, telling us, not just the monks, telling us, okay, should, we should reflect on death. When this was said, a certain monk said to the Blessed One, I, Bhante, cultivate the mindfulness of death. So the monk said, yeah, I, 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 I practice this, you know. Then the Buddha asked, but how, bhikshu, do you cultivate the mindfulness of death? Then this monk said, here, Bhante, I do it thus. Indeed, should I live only a night and a day, I would wisely attend to the Blessed One's teaching. Much indeed would be done by me. This Bhante I cultivate, thus Bhante I cultivate the mindfulness of death. So he says, okay, I do it day and night, all right? And then another monk said, Section, uh, section 7 eh? I too, Bhante, cultivate the mindfulness of death Then the Buddha again asks How do you do it? Then this uh, man says Indeed, should I live only a day? Right. So uh, maybe my life only one day This monk reflects eh? Previous monk is one day, one night So this monk says In my case I reflect that Maybe I just live for one day more only. So I better practice, better meditate then the third monk, section 9, says that he meditates for only half a day. All right? He says, wow. He says, uh, or rather he reflects, maybe my life will only last half a day more. How do I know? Right? I don't know. And then this goes on. Another monk says, section 12, maybe I live for only just the time it takes to eat a single arms meal, like you take one handful you put into your mouth, maybe you know, that, that much, that long only and I reflect that I will die then the monk number 5 section 13 he says, indeed, should I live just the time it takes to eat half an arms meal I just take, maybe take a bit only you know, half that time next monk 16 says Indeed, should I live just the time it takes to chew and swallow four or five, four or five morsels, right? Chew food and then just bite four or five times and then swallow. Then monk number seven, section 18, says, the third line below, no? Indeed, should I live for just the time it takes to chew and swallow a single morsel, one mouthful on it. Just now it was four, mo four or five mouthfuls. Eh? Then comes the last monk, number eight. He says, section 20, Indeed, should I live just the time it takes to breathe in and then out, to breathe out and then in, right? So, so for me, life is just breathing in, breathing out, right? Okay, so the Buddha said, all right, very good. So you all have your own way of practice, right? The eight ways, everything's repeated. Eh? Then the Buddha comes to his own conclusion, section 22. 
It says, those monks with shoes are said... So the Buddha said, if you say, uh, you, you live one day, one night, and so on, up to swallowing four or five mouthfuls, huh? you say, well, you're not doing well enough. Huh? Still negligent. Huh? The Buddha says, 22, uh, they only slowly cultivate the mindfulness of death, the destruction of influxes. In other words, they do it slowly. This is a slow way of awakening. Then the Buddha says, number seven, number eight, the last two monks who say that with every mouthful they chew, they chew their food, they reflect on death. And the one who says, as I breathe in and out, I reflect on death. The Buddha said, these two kinds of practitioners, section 25, they keenly cultivate the mindfulness of death for the destruction of the influxes. Destruction of the influxes means to clear away all the impurities, all the defilements that prevent us from awakening. Yeah? So the one who says, I breathe in, breathe out, that's the one who will practice very well, who will quickly attain awakening. Yeah? Therefore, bhikshus, train yourself thus. We will dwell diligently. We will keenly cultivate the mindfulness of death for the destruction of the influxes. Thus, bhikshus, you should train yourself. Okay, what does it mean to reflect that as I Breathe in, breathe out. There is death. I told earlier, remember? If you breathe in, you can't hold your breath. You have to breathe out again. You have to give it back. You have to let it go. So it's as if when you breathe in, you are born. And you give out, you die. In, born, out, die like that. Because if you hold your breath, you won't live, you see? So that's one way of reflecting. When you reflect in that way, you're more aware of impermanence of life. Right? And another meaning of uh, reflecting this regularly, it means you're asking yourself, what, am I, what good am I doing now? I mean, if you just sit quietly one day and you tell yourself, let's say I'm going to die tomorrow, what should I do today? Right? You know, there are a lot of things sometimes you want to tell people that we just don't want to tell, we dare not tell. And this is when the time comes, wow, I need to tell someone I'm sorry, or thank you for that, or tell something important to somebody, something good and happy. Right? Now, so this is a lesson here. Sometimes we talk to someone who is dying. Don't give long Dharma talks and lectures, you know. I mean, you, you give some Dharma talk, yes. But you must give a chance to this person to talk also. You've got to listen carefully to what this dying person is trying to tell you, something useful at this. Of course, encourage this dying person to be think happy things and uh, never think unhappy things because not, not, uh, there's no use eh, thinking all the sad, unhappy things. So this person may have a message. You know, may tell you, okay, please tell somebody this, please tell somebody that. So listen very carefully to what this person has to tell you. These are the last... Uh, messages if you like huh? and we also may have that kind of last messages for the living okay? so that's the meaning here to reflect on death breathing in, breathing out to see this life as valuable and what am I doing good about it right now okay you know I try to practice this when I'm doing my translation work right you know, translating for 20 years is not an easy thing, you know. I know some of you may say, oh, my goodness, how boring it is. How, did, how does it do it, right? Well, one is reflection on death, you see. Let me give you a simple example. Okay, I finish one paragraph. I say, wow, this is tough, you know. And I say, let's go and watch some TV or play with a cat or washing dishes. You know, washing dishes is such fun, you see. So... You just feel like going away, see? Then I say, wow, if I go away, I'm going to leave this work unfinished, you see? 
So what I tell myself, let me finish just one more line. Okay? So this is what I always tell myself, just one more line. Okay? What does the next Pali line say? So I read the next Pali line. Oh, this is what it says. So I tap it in and do all the necessary translation. And then before you know it, you have finished one paragraph, one more paragraph. And sometimes it gets so interesting, you have finished one page. So there you are. We never plan to do big things. Can you imagine if, if 20 years ago, I told myself, okay, I'm going to put together 60 volumes, each 200 pages. I told myself, oh, no way, I'm not going to, you know how difficult that is. Like, you'll never do it, is it? So we should not think like that. Do what needs to be done right now, no matter how small it is. Right? In Pali, we have a word. It's called tokang tokang. That means bit by bit, drop by drop, right? Drop by drop, the pot is filled. Right? So don't think, the Buddha said, don't look down on bad things. Eh? You think you do one bad, say, oh, one bad, I'm only doing one bad thing. But say, Buddha said, drop by drop, you know, the pot is filled, you know. So you do bad things, it, it will fill, your pot will overfill. Good things also like that. Don't just look down on the good thing you do. Don't say it's just one little good. Because if you do bit by bit, it grows. So this is a reflection on impermanence, reflection on death, so that your life becomes of greater value. So reflect in that way. All right? Let us close with a short reflection. Right, always remember when we reflect on death, we are talking about quality of life. Impermanence means we only have so much time with the people that are important to us or if we are facing difficult people it is still impermanent time will pass when we have good things time also will pass time seems to pass faster and we are caught in something bad it's still actually the same time but the way we think makes we feel as if time is slowing down this is how our mind works but if we are happy all the time, living in the moment, then we'll see time moving just as time would, would move. That everything changed and we learn something wonderful from it and our life becomes even more precious, better. Other people can also learn and benefit from us. Reflecting in this way is wonderful good karma. By the power of this karma, may we be well and happy. May our loved ones be well and happy. May we see the wisdom of the path of the Buddha in this life itself. Above all, may we have the strength and wisdom to aspire to stream winning in this life itself. May those who are practicing the Dharma too quickly attain the path. And may those who are lost find the true path in this life itself. May all beings be well and happy. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.